You know, boxing is a funny game, especially when it was prominent in the lower weights in the mid-1970s. Now, for five or ten minutes after this guy lost to Roberto Duran, a lot of media was saying Roberto Duran was the new North American lightweight champion because this fighter had uh, won the belt back after losing it to Duran's longtime rival, Esteban de Jesus. But Duran was a North American champion, but uh, this fighter in the fight where Duran won by one of the most devastating knockouts in pro boxing history, a 14-round KO, which I'm still feeling in my head and back some 50 years later. This guy would have been a household name because Duran literally almost killed him. So today we're going to be talking about a Hall of Fame boxer for Oregon who is uh, more than uh, talented, a, a very good talent, but he would be a household name in 2024 if Duran would have literally killed him in that match. Of course, we're talking about Ray Lampkin. Now, Ray Lampkin is a retired professional boxer, who, again, who lost probably the most prominent title fight in WBA history uh, in a match against Duran in Panama. Lampkin lasted 14 brutal rounds against a hard-hitting Duran, but when he dropped his guard in the next-to-last rounds, again, he almost got killed. He won the North American Boxing Federation lightweight title fight, uh, but later lost it... Uh, to Esteban de Jesus at the Fell Forum in New York. Then he, uh, again, he, uh, he won it back. Uh, a career record of 34, 16, and 6. Two by knockout. He also had one draw. Now, his induction in the Oregon uh, Sports Hall of Fame was more than uh, deserved. But his path to Duran and de Jesus was a, was a very interesting uh, one. Most of his early fights, ladies and gentlemen, started uh, from the late 1960s to uh, the early 1970s. He had won, I think it was 15 or 20 consecutive fights against some good opponents, but uh, some, uh, what do you call, tomato cans. Now, his big uh, fight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, came against uh, uh, Felipe Torres, June 26, 1972, uh, where he threw a shot out against him. Now, again, some uh, big fights in Portland, uh, including Raul Montoya. So he's fighting mostly out of Oregon. Now, eventually, his first big international fight was against Esteban de Jesus on February 1673. Esteban entered the event 33-1, and and it was for the uh, vacant North American Boxing Federation lightweight title. Uh, A very good match, but Esteban got the best of him, winning a a unanimous uh, decision. Now, you wouldn't take the, the, the lightweight title for uh, Ford would be such prominent, but it was. After two, uh, what do you call, uh, cleanup fights, he faced uh, uh, De Jesus again at the Fell Forum. He was becoming a Fell Forum, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, favorite, and lost another decision to De Jesus in uh, the um, uh, 210, 5 6, and 3 8. So De Jesus was more than. Uh, ready for him. Now, De Jesus uh, had, uh, was picking up many, many victories after his initial victory and loss against Duran. Now, he won his next two fights against Nick Al Alfaro and Arturo Pinda, but uh, a very controversial fight against Angel uh, Mayoral. A lot of people felt he uh, won the fight, but he lost 47-44, 47-45, and 46-45. Uh, now, he... Uh, he had a number of key fights afterwards, which was building. A lot of people felt, well, he wasn't going to fight De Jesus again, but he's going to be uh, uh, maybe come up with Duran. Now, uh, in early 1975, before he fought Duran uh, in Portland, he took on Miguel Mayan for the vacant uh, the, the North American title. Now, Mayan entered uh, with uh, rough numbers, 38, 25, and 6. But uh, again, uh, uh, Ray threw a shutout. He defended the title against Al Foster uh, just nine days later at the Bend High School in Bend. But within a month, he had traveled to uh, Gymnasio Nuvo in Panama, Panama City, and uh, the taking on uh, Duran. But again, Duran at 48 and 1. The 14 round knockout, ladies and gentlemen, was so devastating. If, he's, if his head wasn't on, on his shoulders, it would have went into the stance. Now, it took him a while to recover. He didn't fight for about seven months. 
but had uh, three big victories in Portland against uh, El Hijo Jimenez, two big victories, and Gene Prado, and then he fought uh, Miguel uh, Strada, bet him on cuts. Now, in early 76, up-and-coming uh, talent Villamar Fernandez was his next big opponent. Lampkin uh, suffered a first-round knockdown. This really caused him, caused him to fight. He lost a unanimous decision. Villamar was 18-14-1 going in. Now, 76, uh, again, he was trying to get uh, back. He was a top-10 contender for sure. He bet uh, Claude Durdan and Brooks Bird. But Randy Shields proved a little bit too much. Randy Shields, the future welterweight. Fought him uh, in uh, his home in Portland, and uh, Shields won by KO, uh, which put him to 27 and 2. And that, again, was his uh, last match. But Lambkin, ladies and gentlemen, was a really good talent, uh, good uh, good movement. But for him to win the lightweight title over De Jesus and Duran was uh, uh, not uh, going to happen. But what happened, ladies and gentlemen? He was back. Uh, he was back in the news. Uh, he had suffered a major uh, heart attack uh, uh, in his family, and and uh, 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 back in uh, back in the day, and uh, he was saved by his brothers giving him assistance. Now, the the I, idea about Ray uh, Ray Lampkin, we're going to talk about his uh, induction in the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame uh, again, more than deserved. The uh, uh, Lightning Ray, as he was called by his fans and family, began his career at the age of nine, and one year later, as a 45-pound boxer, won the Montevilla Community Center Novice Tournament. As his career developed, he won 50 amateur bouts, five Golden Glove tournaments. As a pro boxer, again, 35 bouts uh, and 18 by KO. The, like the De Jesus uh, loss, lost by a narrow decision. Again, one of the NABF lightweight title uh, by a seven-round KO over champion Nick Alfaro. And again, uh, the Duran fight uh, uh, was pretty well the end of his career. He wasn't going to move up. But I know the people of Oregon, the people of Portland loved uh, Ray. Ray was a well-spoken gentleman, very, uh, very handsome, very, very dedicated to anything he was a part of. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, I watched that fight in French and it was uh, not live. But the announcer from Quebec basically said, this is quite interesting because... He's fought De Jesus twice. Duran fought De Jesus twice. So this is kind of maybe a lead into a to a third fight against De Jesus for Ray or for Duran. But the handlers of Ray Lampkin, no offense to them, they're they're probably nice people. To put Duran against Duran in his prime was extremely dangerous. There should have been a disclaimer on the ticket. Might might lead to severe injuries for Ray Lampkin. Again, he held Duran off for 14 rounds. And I think that was his first, one of his first 15-round fights that he had with such a high-level opponent. And like I said, Duran, pow. You look at the video and you're still saying to yourself, how come he never was killed? So, but Ray Lampkin is a Hall of Famer. I have a big respect for him. Uh, to fight three times against De Jesus and Duran in their prime, he did well against De Jesus, all, uh, all the, uh, but it's a clash of styles. De Jesus wasn't a killer. Duran was a killer. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the story of Ray Lampkin, our Oregon, uh, Portland, Oregon Hall of Famer. If you like what you're doing here with our boxing, boxing tribute podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share.